I'd like to think I'm kind of funny also. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Amir uh, has, ha, I mean, oddly enough, he doesn't watch a lot of films. Even when he was younger, he's he didn't time. watch a lot of films. Yeah, but he's just the kind of guy he used to read a lot. And he saw my film and liked it. Oh. Thankfully, I dragged him to the premiere. We should Sapna never apologize ka... for having a dream. Correct. She's one of those people whom I really look up to and uh, whether it comes to the way she carries herself or the kind of work she does and the way she stands up for women and also her fashion sense is on point. I, honestly, I, I'm quite amazed that people like you find me fashionable. We will go there about your fashion but let's start with this. Uh, every review I have read about your film, mm. La Pata Ladies, uh, the people I've spoken to, whether it's family, journalist, they can't stop talking about it. And the first thing they say, after so long, mm. we are watching such a beautiful film. You know, so let's start with that. The conclusion of the film, um, there's a statement that the, a man makes that, you know, never, I'll read out that statement. Uh, we should Sapna never apologize ka... for having a dream. Correct. Sapna dekhne ka maafi nahi mangte. Exactly. You know, this is a statement that uh, I can resonate with because as a woman, we feel guilty about everything. And it's very easy for us to feel guilty. Uh, feel mom guilt, on top right now. Uh, feeling guilty as a daughter because I stay in Bombay, my parents are in some other city. Feeling guilty as a daughter-in-law, not doing enough. Work. Yeah. Always feeling guilty, I am not doing enough while maybe I'm doing more than enough. Correct. Tell me uh, these phases in your life where you have gone through these guilts and how you have dealt with it. And uh, right now at this age, uh, where do you stand? So I completely agree with you. And I think every woman, especially women uh, who have children, but even those who don't have this sort of pressure and guilt and expectation that they constantly are battling through their lives about being a good daughter, being a great co-worker, achievement in every department and there's something uh, I suppose like uh, there's been a great deal of uh, sort of I don't know brainwashing of women to, to tell them that we're great multitaskers and that we can be amazing at everything and we keep setting up these super women examples for ourselves Absolutely. just to make ourselves feel like we are worse than we are and all women are always juggling several balls. So uh, I think it's a universal thing and one of the things that we have to do is drop that guilt because honestly you are you owe nothing to anybody but yourself first and looking after yourself, uh, giving yourself space, giving yourself time, giving yourself love is something that we are not told enough and not in a selfish way but in a way that is that horrible word that we now self-care word which I don't like very much but it's really the the idea is that you it's you know putting on your uh, oxygen, oxygen mask, mask before first. you help others yeah so you can only be a better human being if you're a little bit kinder to yourself first so tell me about you dealing with mom guilt mm. uh, dealing with guilt as a daughter and you know then at workspace how did you deal with that you know uh, Abira oddly I kind of took a break from producing for the first couple of years of Azad's life and I was trying to write and do all my other things but even so I was always feeling guilty that I wasn't giving Azad enough time you know or that like I when I was whatever I was writing I was not giving my writing enough time and I come from great privilege so I have a lot of people to do a lot of things for me um, and so that guilt is even more that it's not like I'm like having to sweep and swap the floors and make the dinner and lunch and still I'm not being able to write a script or I'm still you know not I'm taking this time out to write and I'm not with Azad when you know he, he's being picked up from play school or whatever I mean though I always did pick him up but that was the thing I put a pressure on myself until he was like almost I think 10 years old I dropped him to school every single day and fetched him when he was younger also so um, it's it's pointless and that guilt uh, is debilitating, it reduces your ability to be creative, be uh, happy and give you, you know, give joy to other people and luckily I didn't have as much of it I suppose as many women do have and I took a d conscious decision to go easy on myself but it taught me a lot about how we view 
success, how we view, uh, you know, women and what they, you know, how much they should be involved in family life with at the cost great cost to themselves when you met amir this is uh, when you guys were you you said when you guys were shooting swades mm. right mm. what was that one thing that you because he is a filmy buff mm. and here you are who's trying to make her way through it mm. what was that one thing that you that you guys bond over and till date that you connect on Amir uh, has, ha, I mean, you know, oddly enough, he doesn't watch a lot of films. Even when he was younger, he's he didn't time, watch huh? a lot of films. Yeah, but he's just the kind of guy, he used to read a lot. And, uh, you know, he's very funny. I think we com connected a lot on books, on, on you know, kind of like uh, retelling of incidents. He used to really crack me up a lot. I think that's what uh, really humor. started us off. Yeah, humor funny guy <laughs> and uh, and our general I think we connected a lot on sort of the kinds of things that are important to us um, just socially uh, as as human beings kind of thing uh, telling the kind of stories that we want to tell you know why are we doing this mm, so it was more that so now yeah. that Azad is there you know you uh, do you all as a family watch movies or read books more? What is it like? What is family time mm. like? You know, Azad, we keep trying to get him to watch films. He doesn't like films. Ooh. He likes only anime and like manga and all this other kinds of stuff. And we're like, live action, he's like, nah, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, he saw my film and liked it. Oh. Thankfully, I dragged him to the premiere. Dragged him. And yeah, he didn't... He doesn't like being papped or being yeah. Like, he's like he's okay now. He's all right. He'll put on one like fixed smile and be there. But he's he's actually a really funny guy. That's the interesting thing. He's like got daddy. a great sense of humor. Yeah, I'd like to think I am kind of funny also. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a nice. He's sort of like this wry sense of humor thing, and uh, we kind of when we get together actually. Um, often it's sports, it's like playing pickleball or going for a swim, um, spending time with his grandmothers and grandfather, uh, stuff like that is what we do together. Board games, ah. that's one of the things that we do a lot as a family. Uh, Katan Amir has of course publicized now worldwide uh, <laughs> and as a family we used to like to play it and we got him a junior Katan also which he was like quite into at some point. Wow. Yeah. And we saw the whole family coming together for Ira's wedding. Yeah. Uh, tell me uh, what was that like because my god you look fantastic. Oh. Uh, the, the look, the belt and the sari. Uh, we had other, I mean... Uh, how did you plan your looks? Because I'm sure you were wearing designer stuff, and it was it was everybody was talking about what you were wearing. Oh, how nice! Well, the sari that you're talking about, which I wore with a belt, was the red, sari. Uh, the red one. That was my mother's wedding sari. Oh wow! Yeah, I had never worn it. I had got it thinking I'll wear it to my wedding, but I wore white. At you my wore white wedding. for your wedding. Yeah, Kerala sari. Uh, I mean, for the uh, signing, I wore uh, some lenga thing and all. But uh, anyway, I had this beautiful Banarsi sari, which is now whatever. It was well, before my sisters were born, so oh my God. 60, 60 years, years old. old. Yeah. And it's just a gorgeous sari. And I was like, chalo, like a wedding in the family. Let's, let, let's wear it. So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, I didn't uh, think about Ira's wedding clothes, the, the whole thing, because I was so busy with post-production on my film that um, I genuinely didn't give it thought till like literally five, seven days before and I was like, Zara, H&M, <laughs> top to match my, but what I have in my wardrobe. Like literally I wore everything that I wore Kiran, was from you know my you wardrobe. can call uh, designers and they will give you clothes. I right? know, no, and I know and uh, in fact for, uh, I think uh, for my, the, the reception, I was planning to wear a designer thing but I didn't end up going because I got COVID. So, Ooh. yeah, I was sick. Uh, so, I didn't make it to the reception. And I had a beautiful uh, raw mango thing planned for that uh, reception. But um, the rest, I just genuinely wanted to keep it easy. Because we, as a family, we're like kind of chill. We like being relaxed, you know. We're not very, very um, formal people. So, um, yeah, that, that Rahul Mishra black dress was something that I would again had in my wardrobe which I would kept for a while waiting to wear it at the right time. Got a chance to wear that. 
the sari was my mom's the very first day when i sang uh, i was wearing a very old tarun tahiliani sari ah. uh, this the plain black crepe again one of the first sarees i'd ever bought right it had nothing on it it had a beautiful blouse that tarun had made which was like embroidered but instead i wore this like sort of silver uh, one onesie like leotard thing just for how, fun how do you like how do you get these ideas what i am saying is you know <laughs> nowadays fashion when we look at i feel everybody is replicating the other but when we look at you it's so refreshing to see wearing a sari in a very different way your hair you know uh, oh let's talk about the glasses <laughs> the glasses you know the way you carry yourself um, and the shoes of course that goes how is it a kind of style that you have adapted or ha- you have always been like this or is it for the red carpet like have you thought of it you know uh, it it probably comes from a place where when i was much younger there was no concept of fashion yeah. we didn't have a i didn't have the money for fashion and there were it wasn't sort of ubiquitous and you could just fashion street was my fashion through college and uh, then you know you'd go to whatever uh, muzaffar taylor to get your kurta stitched or you know things that that you wanted nice like buy material wherever you go that was the kind of fashion for most of my life and uh, um when i actually began to be seen in by public in a way that i was never seen before i had to i had to put on a little bit of a, a kind of a thinking hat and be like okay <laughs> you can't be wearing like you know you're like oldest kolapuris and going everywhere so um that's when i kind of started thinking about it but it's very easy to get pulled into the uh, designer label trap because uh, you know because designers are, make amazing clothes and just by wearing uh, you know it could be a chanel suit or something you you you're safe you'll be safe you'll never go wrong if you wear like a good designer but um, but then you're just the designer is wearing you really you know it's not you and i was became conscious of that quite early because i started traveling with amir i'd never really traveled the world right so i was like oh going to these places like milan and paris and you know whatever la and you go to see these amazing designer shops and firstly the prices only are enough i'm so middle class i would look at them and be like what <laughs> 1 lakh rupees for a dress no chance you know I, that was my head space so i would buy like one or two things that i really liked and then i would find a way to wear it in a way that you know uh it was ref- in some way was a bit quirky like i am you know it's it, so it's hard to explain i i have a very eccentric wardrobe i have a lot of clothes but a lot of them that you'll see you'll be like like where how why would you you know like lots of it is just one off pieces of things that i would have got from indian designers i mostly have indian designers but i'll it's it's how you put things together yeah. and i rely yeah. a lot on mood i rely a lot on you know what i'm phase i'm going through in my life i suppose and sometimes it's you know lots of color or i try, like your I, hair right now blue yeah i've gone through pink which did not work <laughs> and now i'm in blue but uh, no you kind of like you know you also i experiment a lot with silhouettes because i enjoy trying different kinds of cuts and it's not like one thing that i feel like always wearing you know and being very chic or being certain i i've never had this idea of wearing i like to try things on for myself and if i'm excited about it, i mean i'm sure i go wrong but like if i'm happy with it cool with it it you know i'm i i kind of step out it's a it's a bit mood driven and it's an eccentric way of have you dressing. have you spotted yourself on diet sabya you know what i, I have of course i'm a huge fan of diet sabya man See yeah that. yeah full on so when i was spot i i I, t- i i i wrote back and said the uh, best award i've ever got uh, 10 on 10 diet sabya i that's the like, way you feature on ndtv yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah Yes now you know uh, talking about fashion like you said you have been uh, traveling the first time when you were traveling with Amir and, mm. you know uh, the exposure mm. <clears throat> suddenly coming from a very middle class family from Kolkata then studying in Delhi mm. and now coming into uh, this industry being a part and having all this you know there were headlines mm. made that you are the other women mm. that's what people thought mm. 
but how did you handle that phase and how did how did parents react you know back luckily when we got married in 2005 there was no social media thank god uh, thank god because so whatever you heard was through sort of your pink paper whatever not pink yellow journalism yellow journalism so it didn't you just literally did, didn't read the paper and you'd be fine simple life was so simple <laughs> but uh, it affected me i mean of course lots of uh, whenever people misunderstand your intentions or who you are it's always hurtful and it takes that moment of you know kind of pain and then realization that who is this person who's saying this like why should that person's you know sort of offhand comment uh, uh, bother me to this extent you know do they know me have i hurt them in some way is there something that uh you know i'm and then you kind of go back and say have i done or said something that warranted it uh and i think what helps is if you have a clean conscience you know that what you've done is highly kosher or you had the absolutely right intentions when you did it whatever people take from it is finally up to them so uh i mean i grew up a lot in that time uh i kind of learned how to um distance myself a little bit from people's opinions of me because i realized how little control i had over that narrative that was built and yeah i think that you also keep your sanity like that throughout because you and amin have been very public about what you are going through in your life whether it's your miscarriage uh, a surrogacy or your divorce mm-hmm. you know so both of you always had this decision in mind whatever happens we will come out clean to the public because they are fans mm-hmm. like it was it a conscious decision it was a it was definitely a, con- a conscious decision because uh in some ways we do realize that by uh you know you are in the public gaze you're living your life very publicly and uh people often you know without when you when you don't state what you in some ways and what what we were doing was completely legal very very um, morally ethically fine you just you it's better to be upfront about it and not let people guess about it because then what happens is uh, even after you've said it people can assign meaning to it yeah. but if you don't uh, it's very easy for people to be you know kind of catty and we've seen how big public personalities have been dragged through all kinds of things when they're going through prob tra- tra- painful times you know and i i realized that the second you're more upfront about it people are much more understanding of it they just there's a there's a curiosity there's a connect with an actor and uh, you know what his life must be and there's an interest in in this relationship and uh, you make the country part of your wedding you know your every though we didn't we again got married pre uh, sort of uh, social media media world but uh, you know you kind of realize that it's uh, just everybody backs off they give you your space when you ask for it uh, it's that kind of perverse interest only comes when you are kind of a little bit hiding or you and that's not to say i do think all everybody deserves their privacy you know you they need privacy Absolutely. and uh, we've become obsessed with knowing every detail about everything and we demand it yeah. now and and we are fatigued by it at the same time we are not satisfied by it so it's it this this generation and this like world that we've created that is so taken with likes and you know validation immediate validation is all quite uh, quite terrifying especially as a mum it's something I was just that I, say that. yeah it's something that i think about a lot because you know azad will tell me yeah, how do you keep him away so he is thankfully you know because as people amir and i are very very down to earth we wa- i to walk to my local coffee shop i have a very normal life and people are very accustomed to it and highly uh, leave, give me my space and privacy so i'm really really grateful for the you know kind of real warmth i've felt living in this this city of course but even in general people in in bombay and around maharashtra i've never had a sense that people uh, you know want to know or like are invading your privacy they'll back off if you if you ask them to and that uh, is also how azad has he, he when people ask him for a picture i've told him that look you you if you want if you're okay with it say yes if you're not say no 
so often you are saying azad usually tells so we you. go to we go to uh, uh, you know airports and huh. people want a picture with him and uh, so i tell him to say you know whether he'd be okay with it and sometimes he says yes and they take pictures and sometimes he says no so he has luckily outside of that we don't have you know paps outside our gate and we are not followed everywhere we go which is great uh, so he has a regular life he goes to school he has friends in school or neighborhood and they all have uh, youtube channels oh yeah they all have their own youtube channels which they follow with you know each other and already i can see that oh that chap has so many more followers on his youtube channel but his videos here oh, he's only kind of using you know already made videos he's not making new stuff and still he has more followers and likes and this was when he was 10 and i was like one second <laughs> what is happening here yeah but that's the reality that's what he told you yeah he was like what i mean i'm editing all these videos i'm making new videos but he has many more likes and it's it's a valid question you're like why does he have so many more likes he's just putting out what somebody else has made and this is the i think the beginning and uh, uh in some ways the end of like uh, uh this this quest for um likes and followers validation for this quest for uh, approval it's the it's like this it starts and finishes here you want more likes you want more followers ultimately it has to make you happy to be making this because you may never have more followers you may never have more likes do you still want to make it is that what you want to do does it give you pleasure you know and that if you sort of come back to doing what you feel is valuable as a as a creator as somebody who wants to make things um that's the only reason for beyond a point that you should be doing it absolutely and of course for many people it's money but uh, we know that you once you go down that whole rabbit hole you can end up doing anything mm. you know so yeah. yeah it's so hard to be a mother during these times yeah to explain a child about social media is so hard today i was reading this article that the new york magazine uh, uh had uh, i think it was a new york magazine i'm not sure but it's about again the the the, the effects on mental health yeah. of uh, of uh, a uh, this gen z you know people who were like sort of 9 10 when the uh, when social media created the like button created the retweet button uh it changed everything the selfie came in yeah. the front facing camera came in so it's been now 15 14 15 years since these advancements have completely changed our view of ourselves and how do you again begin to you you know to, to, how are you because we didn't have these pressures growing up i'm so glad we did yeah because you you were you were odd you were eccentric you became the person you became and you'd always have critics but you'd also always have people who loved you and you know found you amazing and they right? were right in front of us and they us. were in front of you yeah. and the people who said things behind your back you didn't get to know of as much and you were able to have some sort of self possession some confidence of yourself in yourself um but today you're naked in social media everybody is judging you at every point if you are if you're there in that way and you'll have people who love you and of course they'll you'll have the detractors and then you kind of have to choose which is why a lot of people treat social media as an avatar of themselves and not really themselves mm-hmm. if you are able to dis- disconnect from it to that extent i suppose then it's healthy yeah but you know how do you make sure that uh, azad is away from the criticism or people talking about the family mm. because that is something that yeah he's I'm, going to have to yeah face. Deal, he, i mean honestly i can't prevent things beyond a point has he come and asked you ever uh not really no i mean we we actually are the divorce was the only thing that we were worried about because you know as a child it's always difficult and uh, we were very very conscious of the fact that uh it was public for him uh in school etc so we actually we got lucky also we 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 did did it during the lockdown and so we were all, we were very much together when we had those conversations and so it wasn't like oh we were rushing off to school or rushing off to work and discussing at night what our lives were going to be like or you know changes that were going to happen and um it gave us that time to kind of be private about it 
and it also gave us the time to be do it together so um, so we kind of held our, each other's hands through that process and i think uh, i'm grateful for that break that covid gave us for this one reason um, and because we when we had a chance we came in you know before anything else told everybody that we were doing this uh, and we talked to his school about it it there was nothing but support honestly so he hasn't had to face negativity in that sense and i don't think i mean the kinds of social media he follows he doesn't okay. yeah That's a he's good thing. i mean he's luckily not on social media except youtube and on youtube he's following sort of naruto <laughs> jujutsu kaisen so i'm not sure <laughs> he's interested in pa- you know sort of gossips mental health is something that as a family you guys have spoken out a lot of people still while we are already talking about it a lot of people never used to speak out about mm. it why whether it's amir whether it's aira you'll always have been very open about mm. it now when there's a wedding happening in the family and they're making headlines every everywhere you go is the family wedding mm. you saw it yes. it's everywhere yeah. <laughs> what they are wearing criticism of what she is wearing mm. she shouldn't have worn it why as as a family when you are enjoying all this and these keeps popping in is there a way that you all have decided ignore move on or have you all discussed it post or has i ever told you that why are they it's my life like what is happening or has has it affected you guys in any way honestly i mean uh, i can't speak for the whole family because everybody has a different sort of public profile and relationship with uh, the broader world of social media but when it comes to me personally i have not really uh, i don't i i'm not into reading comments and things that much so i don't actually know what all was talked about i do know that there i i i did catch that a lot of people were shocked about popeye's shorts <laughs> and there was a very good reason and uh, you know and then people got to know once again they were told why the shorts happened and that he was running to the wedding and all the rest of it but there will be criticism and i don't know uh, anyone who's a public figure who hasn't had it for something or the other and usually the most trivial things you know uh so we are not so invested in people's opinion of us i suppose it's because both reena and myself have not come from the film industry we are both very very otherwise regular people um we are older we don't we're not so bothered in that sense i suppose not the gen uh, z yeah not gen z and honestly uh, the younger lot would it would be interesting to ask them you should have a conversation maybe with them because uh, i ira has been so vocal yes uh, uh, about her mental health and mental health in general and she's really you know i i mean we're so proud i'm i'm personally really proud of her journey honestly she's uh, created something quite amazing with agatsu and very lasting and um, and this is one of the aspects i'm sure that she deals with in her work as well because i don't think there's anything as impactful on mental health as this complete uh, sort of like immediate uh, reaction that you get to your self and your work mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. social media mm-hmm. especially when you're on it a lot which younger people are so uh, you know she probably will have a different point of view on it but i personally didn't it didn't it do, didn't affect me or doesn't affect me uh, as much i mean also because i genuinely don't read it i don't know where to read it i, I think for for especially you know my sisters in law reena everyone it's such a big warm big family the fun was in all getting ready together uh-huh. going to each other's rooms do you have a safety pin do you have this you know we were quite um, it was it was in away from bombay in udaipur and it was kind of like it felt like a big family get, get together. together yeah we were hanging out with people after so long so i think how we looked and what we wore was nice i mean everyone's interested but in you enjoyed yourself yeah, that's we just the most had a great time thing. yes yeah. okay thank you so much kira thank, thank you for you. talking to us that was lovely abida